G'day folks, welcome to this playthrough of Aeon Trespass Legacy. I am all set up for uh, the start of the Learn to Play tutorial. Uh, if I can just briefly zoom out, I will stay zoomed in on the battle map, but you can see here there's a broader setup I have. So we've got our, well, we've got our Hecaton out on the left. This is using the 3D printed monster stand that I spoke about in my pimping blinging video. Uh, basically, I will be able to sort of place little modifiers there. Uh, discards go to the back in a little discard holder. Uh, it's just fairly versatile. It'll, yeah, suit every monster. I've got the sort of level two and level three cards sitting at the back there. We're up to level one here, so we'll use drawing cards from the front. I've got my I forgot what they're called. This is one of them signature. <laughs> they have turns basically. This is what the monster does if it either can't see anything or if it's asked to do its signature move. We are fighting a level zero. In fact, I'll, I'll zoom in just a moment, but we're fighting a level zero Hecaton, um, which means, what does it mean? Six wounds. Uh, it gives us a friendly warning, so it won't knock us back as far. I'll talk about all these things in a moment, uh, but here it is in the middle. Mostly painted, I think. I, uh, I don't know if I'll do any more with this. I'll just move on to, because I want to get everything painted, so I think I'm, I'm satisfied with that. The, the miniatures are painted as well, so here is my Argo which is, as I try and slip that in, which is the ship that we sail around on. Um, mostly kind of wood. I've tried to go with sort of bits of gold. There's some trees in there. So there's like little bits of green bushes at the front. Um, and it's got the sort of ceramic, gone from that sort of ancient Greek um, stone and ceramic roofing on top. That's the kind of paint scheme that I've gone for. Dark oceans, so that'll come into play soon. And then we've got our various um, titans. Uh, so this is Philoctera. Okay. Now at the start of the campaign, they only have their fists. They have no weapons at all. So they'll all have uh, this weapon. Um, yeah, so fairly drab paint job. I thought about some color, um, but you look at them and you look at their kind of character sheets and they're very, they're very gray and dark. Uh, I've given them sort of skin tones. As I said, speed painting. Um, check out the pimping blinging video if you want some more information on that. But uh, yeah, didn't take me long. So got that done last night. Um, so as I said, we're all set up. So characters are down the bottom here. I've got my priority target. I need to check a few other things as well, which I'll, I'll run through. I'm running through, as I said, the tutorial. It's kind of step by step. It guides you through the first turn or two, and then it lets you go freely to try and defeat the Hecaton. Um, what else do you need to know? Die roller, dice. Um, I've picked my, my uh, Argonauts. So they've just got a face. Uh, I don't even know what they're kind of characteristics at the bottom here. So Fenelope adds one will. Leocules, so this is basically their dream walkers. They are, in a sense, mind controlling our giant titans. Uh, for a sense of scale, so one of these, <laughs> one of these has a human attached to their leg. It's very difficult to see, but can you see that little human down on her leg there? I think that's a human at least. I don't know what it's doing there, hiding behind a tree maybe um so yeah these these humans are kind of in a sense mind controlling these giant titans who are fighting these even more giant monster now, for a sense of the sale of a monster here's a tree now, i like how they include these little things for scale there's some stone columns in there which i just kind of painted quickly at the end all right so they're, they're talking about monstrous monstrous monsters um, okay, I'm going to kind of explain things as I go. So I'm going to zoom back in to the, the battle board. This is a, up here is the map that I've set up as well. I've got various 
cards that I'll draw on. That should be good. Give you a sense of what's going on. These are the 3D printed tile holders. Um, I'll put a link below. A few people have asked about these, so I'll put a link below. We've got our trauma decks over to the right here. We have got um, conditions. Where are my conditions? I did have them somewhere. Oh, yep, conditions are just to the right as well. Then we've got Kratos deck and Moros deck also along the right here. Um, they're sort of various effects. Um, I've removed certain cards. So for this tutorial, we removed certain cards from the deck. That's all being done. Uh, these are opening tokens. So these in particular, so opening and break are the two that I'm probably most going to use. This makes it easier to hit. This makes it easier to wound. And I'll talk about those in a moment. Um, attack dice, power dice, we've got Dream, Water uh, Dream Walker Titans, Argonaut card. Oh, we don't have our Argonaut sheets. So I haven't printed Argonaut sheets yet, but I will do that in a moment. I don't think I'll need any of the, uh, any of the information on there just yet, but I, I will do that soon. And of course, I forgot about our Triskelion. So let me grab these little things and I'll talk about how these work. So these tri Triskelion, Triskelion represent the three attributes of your Titans. Their, their danger, which is kind of an indication of their health. Um, as when, when, it, when you take a hit, you increase your danger. And after you've taken hits and increased your danger, you then draw a trauma, a trauma card based on your, if I can just show you. So this danger corresponds to this kind of card here. And it tells you what level of trauma card to draw, whether it's minor, major, grave, or what's called an obol. Once you draw an obol, you've got a 50% chance of dying. And these can be both positive and negative effects. So despite, you can, you can take four hits, draw a major trauma, but that major trauma may actually be something advantageous. I haven't gone through the deck because I want to keep it a bit of a surprise, um, but that's what danger does. It's almost like wounds, um, reflects how much danger your Titan is in. Um, then you've got fate and your fate points, you can increase your fate points to reroll dice. So if you really wanted to hit on an attack, you can spend a fate point to, to reroll, uh, for example, a critical dice and your fate goes up. But you don't want to push your fate because there are certain conditions, certain cards, and it may say, for example, if your fate is four or higher, the monster will attack with an additional dice. So you've got to be careful in how often you use that. And every time you make an attack, you increase your rage. And um, as your rage increases, you unlock special abilities also on your Titan character sheet. So as your rage increases, you get these bonuses. And these is, this is where your openings and what are they called? Openings and break tokens come in. So the more you attack, the more your Titan becomes angry, the more they are able to draw on these special abilities to make it easier to hit and wound the Titan. Um, and you become more powerful as well. So the idea is that the battle, in, again, I'm gonna contrast with Kingdom Death Monster. In stark contrast to Kingdom Death Monster where over time, I think in most battles, I mean, every, every, in Kingdom of Death Monster, every monster is different. The same with Aeon Trespass. But in most battles in Kingdom of Death Monster, the monster becomes easier over time. You weaken it. You reduce its range of AI actions. You remove these cards. You might cut off its, the lion's tail. You might sever a limb, things like that. It becomes weaker. Its movement gets reduced and so forth. In Aeon Trespass, it almost works the other way around. The battle escalates. Your titans become enraged. They become stronger. They do you know, create more openings, create more breaks in the monster's armor, um, which helps you and helps the battle. At the same time, every time you wound the monster, you are removing cards from their deck. I might just shift that over so you can see a bit more of that. You are removing cards from their deck 
and adding stronger cards. So they'll be getting stronger as well. That means that as you're getting closer to victory, the monster is becoming tougher and tougher and doing, I guess, more damage to you. We'll see how that works. Um, so yeah, that's there's this escalation concept in Aeon Trespass. The battles escalate. Um, they become more intense. This really, I had just played um, uh, Cthulhu Death May Die, which is a bit of a dungeon crawler game in the style of Mansions of Madness. It's a lot like, very reminiscent of Mansions of Madness. It's an Arkham Horror style game, but you're exploring an environment and the battle escalates and you become almost superhuman just before you die. Um, and that really reminded me of the combat mechanisms from Cthulhu Death May Die. So if you like what you see in terms of that escalation, um, check out Cthulhu Death May Die. It's a fascinating game. I actually have a video, a, re a, a live play of Cthulhu Death May Die on the channel from, it was during COVID lockdowns and we're playing it online. So check that out if that sounds interesting. Okay. Um, what else? Okay. The game is always played with four Arconauts. They're always set up, even if it's one player, two player, so you'll need to share characteristics. Um, what else? Somebody uh, has the priority target. Yep, that, that's assigned randomly at the start of the battle. We've got our fists. I'll talk about that in a moment. Uh, da, 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 da. Signature and routine. This is signature, this is routine. So routine is where, oh, there it is, it's at the bottom. If they cannot see an enemy, they'll do that. In which case, our Argo, which, so basically this Hecaton has jumped onto the Argo and it's attacking our ship, our civilization. If they cannot see one of us, our Argo loses one structure. Now, I don't think I want that to happen. <laughs> I think I want to give the Hecaton a target to attack. So basically, I want to make sure that it can always see at least one, um, one of my Titans. Uh, AI cards, they're mostly shuffled. There is a bit of a sort of starting card for both the AI action and the body part damage, which I'll talk about in a moment. Um, these are columns. Okay, so this is the only terrain we have at the start of the game and it's a column It is an obstacle. It is obscuring so it will obscure vision and it is destructible So the Titan will crash through that and destroy these columns They can also smash my Titans through this as well and destroy them and hurt my Titans uh, If I push the primordial onto this tile remove the tile and roll the d10 I might be able to place a negative, uh, what's this called, Aeon, I think it's called Aeon Trespass token in the Kratos pool. This will reduce basically its armor. So it's hard to see this symbol, very tiny symbols, but this is effectively the, uh, the Hecaton's armor. All right, so I wanna reduce its armor. So I, I, could, I could push it <laughs> onto the tile. I don't know how I'm gonna do that. I don't even know how I would begin to push. My fists are not good at pushing, it seems. Um, yeah, okay. All right, so 16 columns have been placed. My Titans have been placed. The Hecaton is in the middle. It has a front and a back, which will influence its ability to target. Draw the top card from the Minor Trauma deck. An arrow in the bottom left an arrow in the bottom left corner shows the direction it is facing. Okay, I think it's this arrow here. Is it? Are we looking at arrows here? Oh no, that's not an arrow. I'll destroy another one with an actual arrow. That's not an arrow either. Neither is that. Let me shuffle this minor trauma deck first. Maybe I haven't shuffled these yet. All right, do we have an arrow? Yes, it is facing to the left. All right. And we are ready to go. All right, so to start with, we begin with the primordial round. Okay, so the Hecaton always goes first, and we start by drawing the top card from uh, the Hecaton AI deck, and it is cold open. Now, this is established by the tutorial. Um, 
All right, and you'll notice sort of three steps here. First, they pick a target, then they'll move and attack, and then they'll have an after attack action. Um, okay, so the first thing we do is they will choose the target, which will be the closest Titan in front in range. All right, so in front is basically in front of the Hecaton, uh, which is imaginary line from the front of the base, looking to the left here. Then uh, in range, well, they're both in, in range basically means who they can move and attack towards. So it'll be one of these two. Now is one of these the priority target? In the case of a tie, it'll attack the priority target. Well, Solon is all the way over here, so it's not gonna be him. So it'll be one of these two. Either, who have we got here? Ulyssia or Philoctera. Um, in the case of a tie, when there is no, um, when there are two equally valid targets we can choose just to make things a bit easier i'm going to say philok terra here all right so he's going to pick her as the target next step is to move and attack this target he has a movement of six and he just moves um and i can choose his moves to the closest closest path but there's a couple of options here he's going to go one two three, and then he's there. All right, so it moves and attacks. And you can see here, this is the, um, the fate um, modifier. So if the fate was three or higher, he'd attack with one extra dice. Fortunately, that's not going to be the case. All right, so he's moved to the target. Uh, it's time for it to attack. Now here's its attack characteristic up the top here. It rolls four dice. Or rather, what happens? Okay, what happens is it attacks. It makes four attacks with its swinging fist going all over the place. I now need to roll to evade his attack. So he doesn't roll to hit. He doesn't do anything to hit. Rather, it's my responsibility to roll to evade. And you'll roll four dice because there's a four there. One of these will always be a critical dice. So this is my critical. Um, and I can score a critical, I think it's called a critical evasion. Uh, I don't quite know what that does yet. The six plus is what I'm trying to roll to evade his hits. So for every six or more that I roll, I successfully evade his swinging fists. All right, let's see how that goes. All right, that's one successfully evaded, three hits going through. So he scored three hits on Philoctera down here. Now I resolve the attack effects of that card. Now it deals uh, one damage for each hit. So on Philoctera, I take her, um, I forget what it's called already, try thing, and I just add three danger. One, two, three. Okay. Triskelion, one for each hit. Then, whenever you are dealt danger as a result of an attack effect, if you suffer danger as a result of something else happening, right, you add the danger and you stop. But because this is an attack effect, I then draw a trauma card and I check Philoctera. Now, this is these are all the dream, the base Dreamwalkers, they're all the same, but later on this will be slightly different. It's really fascinating how the different Titans have different characteristics and stats and tables and the like. For Philoctera, a 1 to 3 is a minor. This is a symbol for a minor trauma. So for Philoctera, I draw a... I'm going to shuffle these again. Because I don't think they'll very well shuffle straight out of the box. So I draw a minor trauma. Um... Okay, and the rules for the tutorial are saying, instead of drawing the top trauma card, just find and resolve Kratos Whisper. So I'm gonna look through these and draw Kratos Whisper. Here we go. And it says, gain one rage. Okay, gain one rage. There we go. Now, again, you if you ever reach 10 rage, your Titan 
goes insane and effectively is out of the game. But it is, I think, I think good early in the game to increase this by a little bit. This will just increase my, <laughs> it'll increase my, uh, my fortunes just a little bit. Okay, so um, now, whenever you increase your rage, you must compare it to the person who is priority target. Philoctera now has the highest rage, so she gets the priority target token. All right, I'm gonna put that over there as a reminder that she's now the priority target. Um, if there were other pro, uh, attack effects, you resolve them now. So now there are none. Um, so now I move to the after attack. And this says push back three. All right, so what is a pushback? A pushback is where the Hecaton grabs my person and basically pushes them back three spaces. So one, two, three, one, two, three. Now he's going to collide with this. This is a, as I mentioned before, it's a destructible piece of terrain. Um, so it is destroyed. Okay, there are, I don't think there's any other effects of that. If, uh, if a Titan was pushed into that, it would suffer crash, which is basically it suffers a damage and I think is, no, it just suffers a damage and a crash, I think. Right, so there's, there's a special effect called crash. It suffers a damage, it is knocked down, sorry, sorry. Uh, the subject craft raises their, their damage by one and suffers knockdown. Right, but that wasn't the case. So there's no knockdown, there's no crash. Instead, the terrain is just is just destroyed, I believe. All right. Um, once I'm done, place the resolved AI card face up, or in this case, I'm putting it in my discard slot on my monster management tray over here. The primordial round now ends and the Titan round, my round now begins. Now, again, this is somewhat scripted for the opening. It says, during the Titan round, I can take my turns in any order. Um, your, your a, a Titan's turn, so basically I'd go, okay, Ulyssia is going to take her turn. And her turn will consist of a movement and an action, a combat action. And you can do those in any order. But it says, um, so, so, so it also summarizes that these all have a speed of five. So this one here can go one, two, three, four, five. This one can go one, two, three, four. This one can go one, two, three, four, five, and it's out of range. So it's saying, um, uh, do, 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 do. Or, do, do, do. what's it saying? Um, sometimes you'll get ranged weapons, but for now we only have fists. So it says start by activating the second furthest Titan, which is Solon over here. He's going to move one, two, three, four, five. So he just makes it. And this is all scripted by the tutorial. Um, then I've moved, now I make my, my attack. I declare my active weapon. So we are looking at Solon here. I'm gonna bring him up just so you can see a bit of what's going on. He has his, his fists. <clears throat> so I start by increasing my rage by one. <clears throat> it's my first attack. I've increased my rage. Okay, rage is increased. Um, now, I check the attack die value of my weapon. There are two dice there, which means I'm rolling two dice to attack. Um, okay, I've got a critical white die here. Then, each monster has an, what's called a two hit value, which is this number here with the fist punchy kind of thing. This means that I need to score a seven or more. 
uh, to score a hit. Whereas anything um, a six or less is going to be a miss. Some weapons will give you a precision bonus, which is the number below the dice here. In this case, it's a zero. But this might have a plus one, for example, meaning it's a little bit easier to hit primordials with certain weapons. Um, the, the red dice below that will be important in just a moment. For now though, let's, uh, let's make an attack and see how we go. Seven or more needed. That's nothing and nothing. So you know what? I'm gonna, I wanna get a hit here. So I'm gonna increase fate by two. Now you must determine how many rerolls you wanna take. You can't do one at a time. You've gotta say, okay, I'm gonna reroll two of these dice, increase my fate by two, and hope for something better than that. That's a critical. All right, that's a critical on our critical dice. So there we go, a good start. Um, this is a critical hit. Um, this gives us an opportunity to deal a critical wound. Nice. If I hit with at least one of these dice, I will draw a body part to see which body part I attacked. If I miss, it's considered a full miss. My attack ends and I skip all the further steps of the attack. Okay. <clears throat> all right, I'm just trying to think here. Um, Oh, okay, it's saying uh, we're going to tip the balance. So the tutorial says we're tipping the balance a bit in my favor. Let's say I rolled a seven and a nine, hitting with both of my attack dice. So let's just say I ignore the, the critical and I'll get my fate dice back. All right, just following the tutorial instructions, which is helping me along. Um, when you hit the primordial, you get a chance to use some of your abilities. This is called the first ability window. Okay, since I hit... I would normally draw the top card and it says for the purposes, find the right mighty fist. This is what I've hit. It's saying resolve a wound on this. The most, most important card is the Aeon Trespass, the AT value, which is this number um, kind of shown in the center here. Now, uh, in this case, we're fighting a level zero Hecaton, and this modifies the AT value by one. So from an armor value of three, it's gone down to effectively an armor value of three minus one is two. And that's basically how many hits or how much strength I need to pierce its armor, its Aeon Trespass value. Uh, okay. So to wound, I must generate two or more power. How do I do that? Now I look at the red dice. My fists generate one red die per hit. Now I scored, according to tutorial, I scored two hits. Um, so I get two red dice, but my Dreamwalker also comes with a red dice. So I've got a total of three red dice and these are basically strength, so I need two or more of these little marks to successfully wound. And again, the tutorial says, oh, look, let's, let's just say that you rolled something like this. Ta-da! Um, now, incidentally, if I got a critical, the Hecaton gains one negative precision token. Interesting. That's if I were playing by, you know, the non-tutorial rules. All right, so... Um, it's saying, let's say you rolled these. Every symbol counts as one power. Um, I'm actually going to, maybe I'll come down a little bit closer. So I'll put, just soul on away for a moment. I'll try and get a little bit closer to this activity. There we go. just so you can see those dice a bit better. Okay, so I have rolled, I've rolled this. Every symbol counts as one power. Uh, every, whatever that symbol is, counts as a potential if I had uh, a break token in the Kratos pool. For now, the pool is empty, so we ignore that. And instead, our power is three. <clears throat> so that is higher than their Aeon Trespass value of two. 
so we have wounded them. We take the card and we put it apparently face up in their wound stack. Now I'm just going to push it off to the side. That's it. Well, I will do that in a moment actually. Um, now, uh, when I win a battle, oh, sorry, I win a battle as soon as the number of wound cards is equal to the number of wounds on the monster. So in this case, with a level zero Hecaton, I need six wounds. I need six wound cards to win the battle. That's what I'm aiming for. Okay. So, first one done, five to go. Um, if I don't wound, I will just instead place this in the discard pile. But before I do that, the <clears throat> primordials get a chance to respond. Now in this case, uh, the monster has been wounded. So we respond with its wound response. First of all, it gains, it does push back one. So it turns around to face me, gets a bit angry and pushes me back one space. Uh, and it says gain 1A, raising the attacking titan's damage by 1. Okay, so we increase, we increase Solon's damage by 1. Okay. Um, now, it says a reminder that Danger gained from a response is not dealt by an attack effect, so we don't trigger a trauma draw. We don't draw a minor trauma as a result of that. Um, then it says knock back five. Okay, so one, ah, oh, but, 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 but. There is also this reminder, which says minus two to all knockbacks performed by the Hecaton. So five minus two is going to be three. One, two, three. He doesn't run into any of the furniture or terrain so there's no further damage to that um, on top of that so this can now go in our wound pile and it says on top of that it's time to now escalate the battle so we take a random body part card from one level higher than the level we just wounded so we start with level one wounds we now draw a random card from the level two deck, and we shuffle it into our current deck. All right, so I'll shuffle this in. All right, so we're keeping the same number. It's, it's randomly placed right in front. We, we, we uh, keep the same number of BP cards. Okay, um, we also um, when you're done escalating the BP deck, go through the AI deck, take the first card that matches the level of the wounded card. So we look at our AI deck, take the first card that matches the level of the wounded B card as level one, and remove it from the deck. It's out of play for the remainder of the battle. All right, so we put that out of the battle as well. And it says, and then take a random AI card for one level higher, and shuffle that back in. Okay. So we've just performed our escalation. So yes, an AI card has been removed, but we've replaced it, and we should have the same number of cards in our new deck. All right. And what this is in fact doing is the Hecaton is getting stronger. It now has a level two card in its deck. Okay, <clears throat> at the end of the attack, we clear all tokens from the Kratos pool. There are none, so we don't worry about that. Um, but it says, uh, uh, right after that, you get to leave your own tokens. This is called the second ability window. There are many abilities that activate this point, allowing you to leave Kratos tokens and trigger many other effects. For now, um, as you're unarmed, you have one. So this is pointing out a, a reminder. This is Solon, who has got one rage from their attack, which according to their card means that they can leave either one opening or one break. Now because I'm rolling um, because I'm rolling with my fists two dice 
needing seven or more, that's quite hard. So I'm gonna try and make it a little easier to hit. And I'm gonna add, I might as well just add it to the monster as a, a physical, he can hold it maybe in his hands. All right, so I'm gonna add that. And what I'm doing here is, this is teamwork. I'm adding a positive modifier for the next person to, to attack him. Um, I get to choose one opening, makes it easy to hit, or one break, which will count one of these as a success, I think. Um, that concludes the first attack. Uh, it seems that by pushing away your Titan, it actually moved closer to my other dude. Um, which will enable him to attack this round. And that's it. I perform both my movement and attack actions. My turn ends. To show that I've completed my turn, I rotate my Argonaut portrait. Solon is rotated 90 degrees. He's done that his portrait on my actual player mat. Um, the battle is far from over though. You know the basics. It's up to you to defeat the Hecaton now. There'll be no hand holding or rigged rolls from now on. Continue resolving Titan turns until all Titans have acted then turn all Argonaut portraits to their original position and proceed to the next primordial round. So there we go, folks. That is um, that is one primordial action and one Titan action. A lot to go, um, but we're off to a start. And I'll continue. Thanks, everyone, for watching, and take care.